Hey guys, HW. As promised, I'm across the road from Waverley Cemetery and we're about to do a film of some famous graves in the, I think it's one of the most beautiful cemeteries in the world if you ask me. So let's get in there and check it out. Hey guys, here's the first grave that I wanted to film today. This is the grave of the famous Australian bush poet, Henry Lawson. And the reason why the grave looks like this, and not like the one nearby, this is apparently what it used to look like, is that it's recently been refurbished for the anniversary um, of his death, or the centenary of his death. He died in 1922. Oh. I don't want to step on anyone else's grave, so I'll just go down the side here. There you can see the headstone for Henry Lawson. And I think by the look of the plaque on the front, I think his wife's buried here as well. His wife, Bertha. So yeah, pretty nice cemetery to be uh, laid to rest in. And uh, I should mention, I just bumped into one of the volunteers that look after the cemetery. Um, I think it's these days kept up to date with um, donations and and um, and helped by a bunch of people called the Friends of Waverley Cemetery. And I just bumped into one of them, and they gave me this cool map. Which, o which opens out. You'll have to trust me, I can't hold the camera and do that at the same time. But yeah, it opens out and it gives you the location of some other famous graves. Now I actually had pl plotted them down on a map for myself. There you go, it's the whippersnipper. Um, so yeah, let's get around to some of the other ones. Alright, here's the next grave I wanted to visit. This is the grave of a very famous Australian cricketer by the name of Victor Trumper. He's got a lovely big cross adorning his grave site. There, oh, there he is there. I was zooming in on his wife. There's Victor Thomas Trumper. Died 28th of June 1915, aged 36. And this actual, this road in the cemetery here is actually called Trumper Avenue, I think, named after him. Now there's another famous graveyard or gravestone just up here that we can walk to. Oh, while we're here, there's the coastline over there. There's Wedding Cake Island. You can see the white water on at the moment. But we're walking up to another famous grave up here. It's about 24 degrees in Sydney today, overcast. Sun keeps popping out every now and again. But I'm getting attacked by a fly at the moment. So that's why I'm moving around and making strange noises. So I could do with a mow along here. But um, here's the gravestone of Archibald. Who was the, um, I, should, I should say... <laughs> I should say his first name. I've, for, I've forgotten that, so I've got to look it up. Let's try that again. So Jules Archibald, and the reason why this guy's famous is he's uh, he was the editor of the Bulletin magazine in Australia. Well, the Bulletin, I don't know whether it was a newspaper, uh, it later became a magazine. And uh, also the, um, I guess, the benefactor of the, um, or the sponsor of the Archibald Award, which is a very famous art prize in Australia that's held every year. A lot of celebrities get their portrait painted for that competition. And so this is his gravestone in Waverley Cemetery. So let's get back over here and have a look at who we're going to search out next. 
see you again soon uh, here's another sporting celebrity from Australia this is the gravestone of Sarah Fenny Durack who was the first Australian woman to win Olympic gold she won at the um, I gotta check my phone again now it was at the Stockholm Games in 1912 so she died 1956 age 66 so she dominated so where are we going to go next I'm going to have to have a look at the map there's a few more that I want to have a look at so let's let's find them hey, he's a monster monument in Waverley Cemetery it's got a massive cross it's got a couple of Irish wolfhounds guarding the guarding the tomb and this was put in place for all of those Irish people who fought against British rule in the Irish rebellion in the 1700s It's probably uh, out of all of the gravestones and monuments in the um, cemetery this is probably the most imposing and probably the most impressive as well this is all the telltale signs of of being for the Irish people, I've got the shamrocks on there, I've got the harp, I've got a few monuments listed in there as well. There's actually some some copper inscriptions of some of the fighting that went on. There's a bit of hand and ha um, hand to hand combat listed over there uh, with knives, and then there's a bit of a battle scene over there as well. So yeah, really really impressive monument this one and I love these I assume these are Irish wolfhounds here I love those guarding over the tomb that's really cool so yeah to give you an idea of the size of it it extends over this whole what would you call this it's almost like a roundabout area of the cemetery absolutely massive monument must have, even back in the old days it must have cost a lot of coin to build this so a few more inscriptions on the back here there's a there's a monument here to the hunger strikers back in the early nine early 80s it says in 1981 these 10 young Irish Republicans gave up their lives in their hunger for justice when the H-blocks of Longkesh became a battlefield during the continued British attempts to criminalise the cause of the Irish freedom. So it's a bit of a, a bit of a testimonial to the to the sacrifice they made. So yeah, massive monument this one. So as we leave the Irish monument behind, we'll head off to the next grave we're going to have a look at. Now I absolutely fluked this one. I was hoping to run into this tomb. And it's underneath this big palm tree here. And it's the uh, final resting place of Phineas S. Thompson. Who, I couldn't believe it when I read this. Did you guys know that... Australians and also Americans who came to live in Australia went back and fought in the US Civil War in all there was a hundred and forty that traveled from Australia to the US to fight in the US Civil War of that 140 I believe at least 40 of them were Australian born so we had Australian born, born fighters in the Civil War just just crazy had no idea and here's a 
is another one here. Um, Henry S. Thompson died 5th of October 1890, served in the United States Army during the Civil War. Oh, actually, there, there you go. There's Phineas S. Thompson's gravesite up there, or tomb um, inscription. So I must have picked up his son with that uh, with that last recording there. So this guy, uh, born July 1836, died 4th of July 1900. Served in the United States Army during the Civil War. So there you go crazy huh and I think there's a few others here as well um, that are part of the Civil War yeah there's another one up there John S Thompson born 29th of October 1843 died 13th of April 1890 also served in the US Civil War so yeah, pretty crazy, hey? I was hoping to bump into a another grave site for an American actor who, um, stage actor. I think I'm going to get my papers out here because I can't remember all this information, but his name was uh, William E. Sheridan. And he was a he was an actor. He came out to Australia a few times, and he was a Civil War veteran as well. I was hoping to find his gravesite today, but I'm not having much luck. So, in terms of the Civil War participants, this uh, vault here will have to will have to do. But yeah, there you go. The Aussies have been. Um, fighting alongside the Americans for a lot longer than you thought so even including the US Civil War now I've got to get my other map out now and see if I can I might do one last tombstone if I can find it and then we'll um, we'll take a a quick stroll down to Clovelly see if we can get a nectar down there huh His next cab off the rank, which is Lawrence Har Hargrave, British born, Australian engineer and inventor. He's involved in a lot of experiments, experiments for early flight, and he just so happened to appear on the Australian $20 note um, up until 1994. So Lawrence Hargrave. And I, just, I was just reading about his um, son who appears underneath him. His only son died in Gallipoli in 1915. So that was pretty, pretty sad. But yeah, the guy was a massive inventor. He invented a lot of different contraptions. Um, just reading about it, unfortunately a lot of them never saw the, the light of day because he, he had a habit of not patenting them. But a lot of them were copied and used by various um, companies and countries around the world. Um, like all of the gravestones today, I'll put a bit of information down in the description. And you can read a bit more about these famous people that we're filming as we get through Waverley Cemetery. And we'll get down to... Um, get down to Clovelly now and get a nectar so I'll film as I as I walk down to down to Clovelly oh actually you know what I'm a massive liar there's one last place that I want to film I don't have all the information on it so I'll have to put it in for text a bit later but I'm going to film a section that was used in a Bollywood film and I'll put all of the details 
Uh, I might put a bit of text over the video and a bit of uh, information in the description as well. So get out, let's get over there and film that quickly and then we'll get down to Cloverly. Here it is. Here's the site of a scene from a uh, Bollywood movie. Can't remember the name of it, but I'll, I'll put it over the top of the film here so you know what it is. But right here was where a section of the film uh, was made, um, which featured Waverley Cemetery. And I think one of the main characters was walking past this Jesus monument here and walking down this path in the in the film. So I'll put all the details about that in the description. So there you go. I can see Bondi in the in the distance. I can see Ben Buckler. So bloody beautiful cemetery, Waverley Cemetery. If I um if I did some quick maths in my head and I thought about the amount of acreage here, you know, how many homes you could get onto the cemetery. Mate, it would be worth God How much would it be worth? Let's work this out. It would be worth, I reckon I reckon probably north of five billion this land here for sure. Maybe even more. And I'm just basing those calculations on like land value around here. Now, I won't put it past any government in the future to to come up with an idea to relocate this this cemetery. They have relocated cemeteries in Sydney before. They relocated a lot of graves that actually sat under Sydney Central Station. So Sydney Central Station was built over the top of a grave site, uh, um, cemetery. And they moved all of those gravestones. I can't remember whether they moved those to Rookwood Cemetery, a cemetery out west, or whether they moved it to Botany Cemetery. But they did, um, what do they call it? Resume, is that, what they, is that the term they use? Resume the graves and, and move them? But yeah, it'll be a massive, <laughs> massive job to do this graveyard. Um, there are a lot of famous people in here, so it's probably unlikely that they'll ever attempt it. But when you got views like this, and you're greedy, geez, it's tempting to to grab a hold of this land, and because you could pretty much build another suburb in here. But um, yeah, look, I don't really have a view either way on what they should do in the future, but. It's a, it's a bloody nice plot of land, that's for sure. Now I am using my old microphone today. Um, got to send my Rode microphone back to the distributor to get replaced or fixed. The power button's not working or anymore. But um, getting down one of the streets inside the cemetery now, on my way down to Clovelly. Do a little bit of filming down in Clovelly and have a nectar with you down there. It's quite windy, so hopefully the dead cat's shielding you from from a lot of the wind that's coming off the water. Yeah, I could have spent I could have spent another two hours in Waverley Cemetery quite easily. There's a lot more famous people buried in there, but a lot of it's overgrown and it's bloody difficult, even with the map. To find a lot of the grave sites so I'll um I'll leave that for somebody else to do in the future to do another skirt around Waverley Cemetery So here's a good here's a good spot to talk about the last video I did, which was the sculptures by the sea. I talk, I spoke about um, you know the people who used to walk and run through the cemetery. Basically, used to walk along these walk along these fences here, and it was just goat trails. So it's just these paths through the 
um, tombstones to get over to the other side but now as you can see it's all been rebuilt with nice uh, nice stairs and um, and grated walkways and all the rest of it so a bit different from back in my day when I used to come through here I was about to say, I think those people are barefoot bowling down there, but they're not barefoot at all. Got their shoes on. That's a Clovelly bowling club down there. It's nice walking along here in the as the sun comes out. I used to come running through here a lot when I was younger. Brings back a lot of memories. Even that Cloverly Bowling Club there, that's been used in a few TV shows and movies before. I don't know which one, but um, some of you probably recognise it. some of the back greens for the bowling there oh. not too sure if they still have competitions on that bowling green don't know whether it's maybe just become a social thing where you you know pay a few dollars to come in and have a have a bowl with for fun with a beer like what's happened with a lot of the bowling greens around Sydney and Australia. Looking down at this oval down here has just brought back some memories. My um, guy I used to work with who lived up the street from me in Coogee um, he used to play touch footy down here. I think every, I think it was every Thursday, every Thursday night, he used to play touch footy. And um, it used to be against um, Russell Crowe, the movie actor, and a couple of his mates. It was when he was filming The Cinderella Man, or getting ready to film The Cinderella Man. He was trying to get fit for the part. And so he, after like a, a day of training, he used to come down here and play touch footy as well. And I think my mate, shout out to Tim used to go out and have um, have drinks with him after the touch footy sometimes at the Charing Cross, Ho Charing Cross Hotel so there you go Just looking at my camera, I'm down to 4%. So hopefully the microphone's still working as we head towards Clovelly. I've come out onto the street to take a bit of a shortcut, which I did often when I was running along this path. <laughs> it's just that little dog leg there does help you out when you when you're doing Coogee to Bondi Beach and back, let me tell you it's a fair distance and throw in all the stairs and hills it's quite a heavy run I tell you what the sun's absolutely stinging me <laughs> any tourists over there thinking about coming to Australia just remember how powerful the Australian sun is and regardless of whether you want to get a tan or not put some sunscreen on because you know 10-15 minutes in this sun 
it'll burn you to a crisp so be careful I've been to you know a lot of countries in in Asia and around the rest of the world where I've walked around for hours and not not even not even got a little bit of pink but in Australia the Sun will beat down on you and just burn you so please be careful when you come to Oz make sure you have some sunscreen on so a lot of this shrubbery close to the beach has grown up since since I remembered it and it's, you used to be able to walk past here and get a view of Cloverly beach the whole way but that's now oh here we go We've got a little bit of a view through here There's a few people having paddle in in what I call the tank because it's a it's a bit of a man made man made structure for like a bit of an ocean pool. So there's a natural structure there as well, but it's but you know as you can see a lot of concrete's been built around it. Just a a word of caution: don't swim in here. When there's been storms because you get quite a lot of runoff into the water and you get you know there's a lot of pollution so i'd recommend against swimming in here when there's been a few storms around but yeah in the distance see where those blue umbrellas are that's where we're going to have a nectar today hopefully so let's uh let's get over there all right we're down in sea salt at Clovelly, a delightful cafe right on the beach at Clovelly. I don't know whether you can see through this window here. It's a Clovelly tank. I couldn't get a seat right near the um, right near the, the edge there. But there's my delicious flat white. So let's give it a try. delicious so yeah sea salt down at cafe down at Clovelly can recommend if maybe you're doing the Bondi to Coogee walk you could stop in here for a nectar or some lunch they've got some delicious food down here as well so yeah you get around it all right we're finished in sea salt delightful cafe right down at Cloverly Beach so I thought we'll finish up the vid by walking to the end of the Cloverly tank or Cloverly seawall whatever you want to call it so I've seen a couple of choice waves come through be good if we can capture one of them on the film as we as we walk through but yeah that um that sea salt cafe i have been there before but i fully recommend it for you if you're doing the bondi to Coogee walk get in there and have some lunch or just get in there and have some nectar like i did so there's the uh there's where people swim down in the tank down there got to be careful you got to time it for your swim as well if you come in at low tide <laughs> you'll be swimming along and scrape your chest on the uh, on the reef or rocks whatever you want to call it at the bottom done that a couple of times so there's a few there's a few people out sunbathing today which is interesting I don't know if I want to get down there it's a bit uh, it's a bit windy there's a lot of water down there as well
Might get up these stairs instead. And there's right at the edge of the the seawall or the Clovelly tank. It's quite choppy today as these waves come in. Just that area over there. I remember when I was younger there used to be those big blue groper fish that used to swim around the entrance there. And a lot of people having a swim in the tank here used to go up and pat them and just have a swim with them which was nice but yeah look as we look at look out to the mouth of Clovelly Beach I'll thank you for taking the trip around Waverley, Waverley Cemetery with me it's HW over and out the video is over